Good morning. So dry camping was a success. I made it to my destination. I had water to spare, uh, water to use in camp. I still have water this morning. So that was great. Um, I think that I'm a solo camper. I have a south site and I was pretty sure I wouldn't have any company because, you know, there's no water here. And I did not have anyone else show up, which was great. I slept like a baby by hiker standards. I mean, I certainly woke up a few times and rolled over, you know, sleeping on the um, sleeping pad I'm not completely used to yet. But <clears throat> it was a great night's sleep. My bear bag was hung. It was unmolested. And I'm going to turn this around and show you the campsite. So this is the trail right here. So I guess that's the downside of the site is camping so close off the trail, but you know, it is what it is. And then there's my tent. There's the fire ring, but I didn't have a fire. And the first thing I did when I got here was dug a cat hole down this path and uh, had that ready to go. <clears throat> Learned that the first night. It's nothing like having to go to the bathroom and furiously trying to dig a hole through these roots. And yeah, so I'm just getting packed up. Should be a scenic overview today I'm looking forward to and then I should be hiking into Pine Grove Furnace State Park. Meet my baby. This is the very first blaze I ever saw on the Appalachian Trail. Um, I can't remember offhand if it was 2016 or 2017 but um, Mike and I um, camped at Pine Grove Furnace State Park and we hiked up the Pole Steeple Trail to the Pole Steeple Overlook. I had had one foot surgery and um, was looking at having another and it was, uh, but I already had through hiking in my mind. That was like something I wanted to do and it seemed pretty unlikely with the condition that my feet were in um, and the condition of my body. Hiking up the Pole Steeple Trail was probably one of the hardest things I ever did um, that first time. It was so difficult and I knew the Appalachian Trail was near. And this is the first white place that I ever saw <laughs> at the uh, intersection of the <laughs> Bull Steeple Trail and the Appalachian Trail. This was the first one I saw and I cried when I saw her. <laughs> um, last year in 2019, um, Mike and I tried a little shakedown. Um, that didn't go that well. I'll tell you guys all about that someday. <laughs> I mean, it went okay. I learned a lot, but. And we ended up coming here and I saw her again. So, yeah. Last year there were ants all over her and I was afraid that she was gonna uh, not make it. <laughs> she's she's doing okay though. Getting to the Pole Steeple Overlook is a lot easier um, from the Appalachian Trail than it is from the parking lot. So it's a really steep climb, um, but you've been climbing for days on the Appalachian Trail, so you're already most of the way up. 
And I've just got this last little bit to go. And it is steep. And it never looks that way on camera, but it is. <laughs> and it's rocky. But it's worth it. If you ever get a chance to go camping even, go camping at Pine Grove Furnace State Park in Pennsylvania. And whew, hike the pole steeple trail to the overlook. Oh, these are big steps. Doesn't look like much on camera, but oh, she's a doozy, let me tell you. Nope, doesn't show up. I knew that from watching all the hikers on YouTube. I think some people might get a little disappointed if they watch all the hikers and think they're ready to hike on the Appalachian Trail. Um, it is not as easy as it looks on camera, but I already knew that, but I'm just saying that for Anybody else who might be watching and thinking about doing a hike, it looks like someone left some flowers, a memorial out here. Um, before you go on a through hike, I would say get your pack pretty much fully loaded and hike where you're used to. Um, hiking a lot where you're used to hiking, you know, unless you live in the mountains or something, um, is, is great. But then when you come out on the Appalachian Trail and you have a fully loaded pack and it's the Appalachian Trail, which is strenuous the whole way, um, pretty much whatever mileage you were comfortable doing, just cut it down in half because that's about where your sweet spot will be. Yeah, someone left flowers out here. They made a big effort to get them here. Oh, big steps. can't believe how much easier this feels than the last uh, two times I did it. It gets easier each time. Almost there. I can't believe I can do this with just one hand on my poles. Oh. 
Uh, I've got to take uh, my pack off because I got to use all fours to get any closer, but I'll get closer and show you in a minute. water there was some water flowing across the trail not too far up that way but on gut hooks it said there was a spring which sounded better than you know this just this riv rivulet um, running across the trail so I decided to hold out for the spring let me turn this around and show you how well this spring is flowing it's not it should be coming out of that hole there and it is pooled here but there's like scum on it it's not moving water i'm gonna skip it if i was real desperate i would go back up the trail to where the water was flowing across but i know i'm almost to pine grove furnace and i think i'm gonna go ahead and go so I guess I learned never pass up flowing water.
looky who I found. Hi, buddy. Here's the Iron Master's Mansion. It's a hostel. And around the corner would be the general store, the home of the Half Gallon Challenge. And it looks like it's open. And there in the distance is the AT Museum. Last I heard it was closed. We'll see. Got the Hiker Burger. It's got a fried egg, avocado, um, bacon, double cheese, double mayo, lettuce, tomato, and onion, and a beef patty on it. It's really good. So while I was in there waiting for them to cook this, a scumbag hiker came in, grabbed the tip jar while he was talking to the ladies, had him laughing a little, and tried to leave with it. And I said, hey, why are you taking the tip jar? And he was like, oh, acted all surprised. And he was like, thanks for catching that. Not everybody out here is a good person. Not everybody's your friend. Hiking the trail makes me emotional. <laughs> Somebody just did me a real kindness. I can't tell you about it because you get in trouble. But people are real nice. <laughs> Some people are your friend. You gotta trust your intuition. And uh Learn to know the difference. Oh, anyway, I made it to uh, the campground I'm going to be staying at tonight. So, just got here. <sighs> Gotta get set up, but it is hot, hot, hot. So, I'm going to cool down first. But I'll show you around later. Okay, how about a little look around camp before the sun gets all the way down? Let me turn you around. So I am staying at Pine Grove Furnace State Park. It is crowded. There's a lot of people here. Um, I'm not in the pet section, but I can hear some dogs barking. Lots of kids. So lots of people around. Um, I'm not in the primitive sites. I kind of wish I was because the temp pads there are so nice, but <laughs> I didn't even realize when you camp over on this side, not only are there bathrooms, but there are showers in them. So I don't even have to like truck all the way to the, the lake to use the shower house by the lake. So that's pretty cool. Also. I'm super bougie, so I got a site with electric, so I got my stuff charging up. Anyway, I'm going to turn this around and show you what it looks like. Alright, so here's my tent without the rain fly on. I just have it kind of semi-attached in place, so when it's time to put it on, 
it's all facing the right direction. I would like to just leave it off. Um, I do have trees over me. I'm not sure how much that would block the dew though. It's very hot tonight. Um, so I don't know. Maybe when it gets dark, I need to put the rain fly on. I'm just really not sure. The one reason I brought this tent um, is because I knew it was gonna be warm out. And this one, you know, it's so airy. Um, I washed my clothes in the shower, like good hiker trash does. I was able to hang a line up and I'm very pleased that because I have the ursac I know how to make knots that are easy to get undone so I'm not gonna have to cut my line and leave it behind I never really learned much about knot tying here is you know the stuff the stuff that's not in the pack I can smell steak Bratwurst cooking. I think I smell smoked sausage. I'm probably gonna sit here and have some sad oatmeal before too long. Um, but anyway, big sight. You know, there's room for a car. <laughs> lots of driveways, so lots of gravel. There's a fire pit. I'm not gonna start a fire. Um, and there's an electric box. So I got my stuff charging up. And yeah, that's about it. I nearly forgot. I have to still um, put my food bag in my ursac and tie it up. There's problem bears here at Pine Grove Furnace. Um, last year, um, my boyfriend, <laughs> saw the mama and the cub they have been raiding the dumpster and they got a through hikers food bag so that was unfortunate so I stopped at the ranger's office and talked to them to see if they had you know maybe trapped those bears because they had a bear trap out here um, last year but they said no they were still coming, but um, it was kind of sporadic. They hadn't seen them, they said, in a couple weeks. So um, I thought maybe with the park being this full, it would keep them away. But the ranger said with the park being this full, um, they probably would come. They'd probably be in the dumpsters. So just like out on the trail, I'm not going to keep anything in my tent. And um, I'm going to tie the ursac to a tree just in case that bear remembers getting food off of the lantern post because I know once they learn something, they never forget it. So let, let me show you what that is. Can you see? Uh, so one end of my clothesline is tied to a black post. And it has a hook on it, but it is not suitable for hanging bear bags, unfortunately. It's a lantern hook. So, super helpful, right? If you had to hang a bear bag here, you couldn't. I mean, there is not a single suitable branch. You know, and if, if there was, it would probably be in somebody else's campsite. I mean, there really is nowhere to hang a bag here. Um, the through hikers who did not have their food stolen last year had locked their food bags in the bathroom. So that was fortunate for them. So anyway, I'm really enjoying the ursac so far. Set of oatmeal. I decided on a chicken packet. I don't really feel like using the stove. But, I got some hot sauce. And some spices. So, you know, I can jazz it up a little. That's another thing, guys. 
I mean, if you're doing a through hike, you you know what you're eating. You're eating everything, right? But if you come out here to do a little shakedown or section hike, whatever you think you're gonna eat, just cut it in half. I don't know what it is, but um, you know, and I've heard other people say it before too. The first week you're out here, like very little appetite. You have to force yourself to eat something. Even something good. Like I had to force myself to eat a Snickers bar yesterday. I don't know. It's odd. But save yourself some weight. If you do come out for a week. You don't need as much food as you think you do. Right. I feel fine. But I... You know, I think it was 90 today. I did okay the previous day in the mid 80s by hiking smart and not hiking between two and four, taking lots of breaks, getting my electrolytes, but 90 was rough today and it's supposed to be 97 is uh, what the gentleman next door told me. So yeah. There's no way I can hike out of here. I literally would be afraid for my life. So I think I'm going to stay at that hostel. So that hopefully will be a good experience.